just recently became 30 years of age. It is strange to be a 30 year old rapper yeah. whose parents gave him the name Despot. So sound advice coming very soon. Look alive or don't make an honest mistake and bury you. A book of lies and I just erase until it spells the truth. This slice of the pie is a piece of cake to moon ready, boom. Bit the dust, all these discs get his chin dirty Kick the bucket, cause this one ain't piss worthy Stick him up or get sucked down in history Where the ones throwing punches and pistols sleep Live it up, can't live it down and quit early 30's the new 20, that is the new 30 Lucky for you money, this song's for two birdies One of them's you buddy, two of them's you birdie Knees buckling, wheezing, feet shuffling Beat the heat running on meet the deep shoveling Dream stuffed in a grease machine it was clearly very different than like what's happening in New York now. A lot of people are calling what's happening in New York now like a second renaissance. But it's like, it's a very different thing because it's pretty much completely dictated and spawned by like Twitter and blogs. Like, you know, you got Rocky and Action. And when I started hanging around that scene, I was probably 12 or 13 years old. Um, my friend Yak Balls, who was like on Def Jokes for a second, was the manager at Bobito's record store called Footwork. And uh, I used to just go into work with him because I went to uh, like a degenerate high school in the West Village and this was in the East Village. So I would walk over after school and just, you know, we were like the kids who wore backpacks and like shirts with like a graffiti on it and like a train or some mm -hmm. dumb shit like that. that I, you know, like, if, when I see people doing that now, I want to like slap them. Like they look like idiots. So I don't know. There's some there's some shame in that. I feel like it's it was it's not the coolest thing in retrospect. But uh, it was exciting to like like go to New York and do an open mic and like LP would be there and like you know Vast would be there, Vorta would be there, and that was like I didn't know them yet and they were like people I looked up to and shit. I only knew Bob and like and Yak and whatever. And that's kind of how all that happened. I would just like get, get in some fucking stupid battle or get in like, get up on, on an open mic and one of these guys would see me and that's how I met Cryptic and whatever. I'm nervous. I mean like, when I was young, I did a lot of drugs and like I was totally like a little delinquent and like I didn't, I didn't really care much about anything. Like the rapping shit came very natural. The first time I ever really did anything was uh, it, I recorded in like this shitty little studio in Left Rack and I was more like when I was like 11, 12 and really started rapping I was on some like straight like gun shit like I'll kill you, I sell drugs, I say the n-word a lot, all that kind of shit, still have tapes of that. I, I tried to make my voice sound as much like Prodigy from Mob Deep as I could and it was like some straight clean shit. Uh, that's gonna it's gonna be me and Prodigy on a rat a tat beat, which I think right. might be interesting. Uh, we have mutual friends and shit. I mean, I'm from Queens. I came up in, a, you know, kind of the same scene. We had a lot of like overlapping friends and circles of friends and shit. But uh, that he was at my club that day for like some Hot 97 press conference, and uh, I feel like that made it like made him a lot more approachable i mean he's like someone i idolized for a long time but he was like in my house so i got to be like yo man this is my shit you want to drink i'm from queens i rap whatever whatever and he checked my shit out and he fucks with it and you know we're gonna do some stuff so that's very exciting for me that's awesome it's a different audience that i might be exciting there are plenty of people who 
listen to rap music and when I say I'm doing this shit with rat attack they don't get excited because they don't even know who the fuck they are yeah but if I tell them they did that kid Cuddy joint they like oh shit <laughs> 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 I get paid to breathe, hooray for me, hooray for me, hooray for me. No telling. I can't say that I think any of the songs that I've made thus far are like amazing. None of them are like the song that I wanted to make and I'm not sure I'm ever gonna make the song that I want to make. So I guess there goes that neurosis. Yeah. yeah. That's what most people think. They either think that it's me like trying to make the perfect rap album or it's me being like held down or oppressed by these outside forces like like a lot of people thought LP would like shit on me and like didn't let me put my record out when in reality he, he gave me money and like signed me to a record label that I really wanted to be signed to and constantly begged me to deliver a record and I never did and mostly there is like a little bit of neurosis in there like I have that I'm Jewish it's like a natural Jewish trait but uh, it's mostly, I'm lazy. I'm, I'll just, I'd rather like take a nap than write a rap song. Right. Yo, it's me, Despot, I'm in here, I'm out here. Low Lifes, Smart Crew, Queens. Shout out to um, my doorman, Antoine. Peace to my other doorman, Mendez, Sisto. Peace to, um, uh, Melendez, the, the handyman. Peace to, um, peace to my mom, Sophie. Peace to my dad, Jerry. Peace to, um, peace to Tommy and Joe's Pizzeria on 108th Street and 63rd uh, Avenue. Peace to Candyland. Peace to, um, Gunshine, who is the owner of Candyland. Peace to his son, Karkeet. Peace to, uh, his wife, who, I don't know her name. I get paid to breathe, hooray for me, hooray for me, hooray for me.